Alright, hey guys, it's Simon here, and we are still here in the fireworks project. And as you can see, I've been digging away down to the next set of things to build. But as you know, we have this. Well, I just found this. Yes, so there is a zombie dungeon down there, as I speculated. And uh, there's. Let's see, it also looks like there's a bit of a cave there as well. So uh, I just thought I'd record this. Getting rid of um, this little thing here. How far back? Let's, let's just go down, I think. Let's just come down here. Excavate from this level. Probably be more convenient for us. Uh, actually, one, two, three, there should be a torch. At this point. I also went back to base to um, get more arrows and to get my sword. Just because, you know, I, I stumbled. I didn't stumble, but I finally made my way into the this cave here, where I knew there were going to be zombies and everything. So now we need to put torches down and... Here we go. I don't know if I want to, um... If I want to... Wow, you guys are annoying. If I want to destroy the zombie spawner, or if I want to keep it, because... You know, it might be interesting to keep the thing. Let's see, how should I do this? I should... Stop enemies getting into the, the project. And I should probably dig my way around to the spawner. That would be easier. Let's see how far back do I need to go. So instead of trying to, you know, fight my way through, if I come over here, I can probably I just have to make sure I keep the the light levels high enough. So. There we go. Spawner is that way. Let's see if I can... Yes, I see you. And if I... Put that out, put that there, put that there... That should be sufficient to... Stop the zombies from spawning, maybe, hopefully. Maybe I need uh, more torches. That should be fine there. Oh, it's a small cave. That's good. Well, that was interesting, wasn't it? Well, the good side, I guess, is I get some mossy cobblestone as well. Now, should I leave this here or get rid of it? I think I should get rid of it. It's a shame though, because... These things are valuable. Can you use Silk Touch on these things? Maybe I just look that up very quickly. Um, Minecraft Wiki... I don't think you can, I'm pretty sure you can't use Silk Touch on these things. Silk Touch... Note 2, Note 3. Uh, does not work on monster spawners. No, it doesn't. In fact, it doesn't even work on ice. That's interesting. Oh, in the snapshot it does. So in the future, it will work on ice and glass panes. Grass block, coal ore, lapis lazuli ore, diamond ore, redstone ore. Huge mushroom blocks. Actually, silk touch is kind of useless. It doesn't do a lot. Anyway, I'm sure I have other zombie spawners in other places, so it's not like it's particularly valuable to me. It's just that, you know, it's one of these things where it's potentially a resource. And I'm just gonna... Should I 
keep it or destroy it? I mean, if I keep it, I have to make sure that it's well lit, so I don't get random zombies appearing. I also have to figure out where it is. Let me just come over here and go straight up and just see where that spot is. I mean, if it's going to be in the way of one of the the TNT launches, then obviously I have to get rid of it. Oh no, no, see it's here, like it's right on the edge of... No, I can keep it. Because it's not going to be in the way of any circuit, like this circuit's going to be directly underneath this one. And this circuit's going to be directly underneath here. And this is like exactly on the... There's like one block buffer on each module, so there's like a two block buffer between the circuitry anyway. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll keep it. Oops. Can I? Yeah, I can put a torch on top of that. And if I'm careful, I won't get any random zombies coming out to kill me. Cool. That's interesting. <laughs> There's gonna be like a random zombie spawner in the middle of my fireworks project. That's alright. That's something interesting. Oh, well, I guess that's it. I was slightly worried that the cave might be quite big, but uh, it turns out to be fairly small actually, so... I do still have to be careful, like if I ever dig my way into a place where the light level is not 7 or above, then zombies will start spawning. So I have to be careful about that. For now though, back to... digging with the pickaxe, I guess. Yeah, the next part is... Anyway, this is again not interesting, so I'll come back when... something else interesting happens, or until I finish this. Actually, now that I think about it, I've been Oh, it's raining. I've been doing a little bit more excavation, and now that I think about it, there's no water in this cave. Remember how a few videos ago there was an Enderman walking around? And Endermen only teleport when they're injured by water? So the Enderman must have come from somewhere else, and I don't really know where that somewhere else is, although Earlier on, I seem to remember I heard some sounds in this direction. I mean, it doesn't matter too much, ultimately. An Enderman can teleport quite a long distance vertically. So we can't hear any sounds now. I think there may be more caves. I mean, it is not unusual, of course, to have more caves. Considering how big this excavation is, we're going to, probably going to um, cut our way into a number of caves. In fact, it's kind of surprising that we haven't found more already. Like, we've only found one cave, and we've excavated a pretty huge area already, so... I don't know, I guess we're going to find more caves at some point. Anyway, it's just, just a thought that, you know, the Enderman probably has come from somewhere else that we haven't discovered yet. Alright, back to digging. Oh, I still have the um, sword and things. So, as I was digging, and I'm still digging, I'm not even halfway through this level yet. I mean, like, this this part of the, the ex excavation. Anyway, I was, as I was digging, I was thinking about that. I mean, there's gonna be a lot of cobblestone in this project. As you can see, cobble and cobble and cobble. It's the cheapest material in Minecraft, right? You know, there's plenty of stone, you dig up stone, you get cobble. I'm just thinking maybe the switches need a bit of differentiation because right now it's all grey and it is a key element of the of the fireworks project. So I'm thinking maybe that needs a bit of colour. So the black TNT launches are pretty obvious. Like, they stand out. Obviously there's something different there, but here, like it's 
the switches themselves are wow they're made of cobble okay so, so that's cobble and that's gray and that's a bit of brown and that's all gray so it doesn't really stand out from the rest of the circuit I mean the redstone itself is red so that stands out a bit so I went back to my sheep molested them a bit for some colored wool and now I think I'm going to um well the obvious choice is the red yellow and orange because that's the bright colors it draws attention it you know it, it suggests something you should pay attention to but I just want to you know try out all of the colors just to see which ones would be best let me just make a little rainbow here so this is our all the all the colors that are available to us now, what should I go for the next? I guess I'll go with that and that and is it blue first or cyan? Oh, the dark green, my bad. Dark green and then this is probably not correct. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight and cyan and I guess we go magenta or purple first. Purple first, then magenta. Doesn't really matter, I just wanna oops. Put all these colours down. Purple, magenta. Pink. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I only have twelve. That's right. Four of the colors are white, black, and gray. So I actually don't have sixteen. Oops. So anyway, those are the colors available to us, and I think. The important thing would be to consider to what extent are they different from the grey. You know, when you put it like that, the the brown, the dark green and the yellow, surprisingly, are not very well differentiated from the grey. Like the yellow you'd think, oh it's a bright colour, but you know when you do that and when you don't have a a light source close to it or even when you do, the yellow is actually not very bright in Minecraft, that's interesting so surprisingly the, the yellow doesn't really work you know from a, from, a, from a distance, it almost seems like that light green stands out the most I guess that, no like that, that's see the light blue and the grey are fairly close and we've got this brown in the way as well, like the brown isn't going to be there in the end because that's all the dirt's going to be well there might be bits of brown on the walls surprisingly the green stands out more or the light green does I don't know if I want light green though, that's a problem the orange is in fact a lot like the brown oh the colors might look different in the YouTube video as well because you know, when you, when you um, compress the video, sometimes they change the color a little bit to, to you know, reduce the file size and all that. So pink? I don't know. I don't know. Orange? Like, orange is the obvious choice for this. Blue and orange? Blue and orange are complementary colors, as in, you know, they're opposite colors. Purples? I don't really want purples. Blue and orange? You know, I wouldn't have thought blue and orange, you know, without actually putting down the colors and then looking at them, but maybe let's try that. And uh, we can try that just by building 
know, the, the shape of this thing and then looking at it. Also, looking at it from a distance is probably not correct neither because this is one module here and then the next module starts right here. So you're never going to see it from a distance like that. So maybe that was a completely wrong way to do it. Maybe we're supposed to look at it up close. That might make more sense. But for now, let's just test this idea. The blue and orange idea. So blue... Orange... Oops. Wow, look at that. Bright colors. 